Right now, we're in one of the most celebrated Holy Christian events. Until this final wind down of Jesus' ministry, until it ended, his disciples followed him everywhere. They loved him, but they couldn't understand why Jesus kept telling them that he was about to fulfill what God required of him. Jesus and the disciples kept seeing all the miracles that he performed, and they were with him for all the years of his ministry. They loved Jesus so much to the point that Jesus had to just draw the line and explain that he was going away, that he had to fulfill a certain destiny. God in his infinite planning up to this point what that we call Easter weekend or Passover as it was originally known. It was beginning on Thursday night, the Last Supper, as the, all the disciples gathered together and calmly sat down around Jesus to eat the Last Supper with him. It was such an intimate night filled with love. Go to chapter 22 in the book of Luke to see the amazing circumstances that involved this intimate timing because Jesus had to avoid crowds. He had to walk at night so that people wouldn't stone him. He had to go into the wilderness to pray to the Father. He had to be alone and travel by night so that people wouldn't stone him because in God's infinite timing, he could not let the Pharisees kill him before the time was right. So now we're enjoying this last supper. As I said, the disciples were totally confused, could not understand that the Son of Man, the Son of God, was going to die. It, it just didn't click in their heads. But Jesus told them that they could not go where he's going, that he must fulfill this prophecy and die a mortal man's death. Fully engaged of all his mortal senses, he felt the pain of the nails that were being pounded through his bones with a hammer. It was with zero dignity that Christ told them that he's lying down his own life and that no man was taking it away. They put a sign above his head on the cross that read like a criminal. It said, Jesus, the Son of Man, and it was posted there almost like a criminal profile. But the reason we have the opportunity of forgiveness and the ability to live eternally in heaven is because this event had to be fulfilled before that could happen. But until Jesus surrendered his mortal life, we were still living under the Old Testament laws of blood sacrifices. During those days in the Old Testament, God only allowed the highest priests to make a blood sacrifice in his name, in the name of God. And all the sinners that ever lived from the beginning of days were about to be delivered into judgment as we were going to enter this new period of grace, which began the moment that Jesus Christ rose on the third day. We were all given the opportunity to be a part of this new revelation called the Days of Grace. I believe that the evangelical church is the most complete, trustworthy teaching church where people can learn the true meaning of the Bible and the true depth of God's emotions. As human beings, we're all mortal, meaning that we pass from the life in our body to the death of our body, but our soul lives on forever. You just have to decide where you want to spend it. You will be living eternally. You just have to decide where. Go back and check out the events in chapter 22 of Luke, and you can see the intimate setting of love that surrounded that entire Thursday evening. Now, that night, Judas was cast out. Jesus dismissed him. And the eleven remaining, they loved Jesus so much that they could not comprehend or accept the fact that he had to die for our sins so that we may be forgiven. In John chapter 3, verse 16, we read, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but we shall live eternally in heaven. There is a place prepared, a table, just for you and I, if we can hang on and live a righteous life to the end of our physical lives. Now, I want to regress a little bit and jump back to the Thursday night at the last dinner. We know that Judas had been cast out, and the eleven remaining were still bickering among themselves about who was going to be the best and who was going to be in charge. And again, they couldn't understand this whole concept, and they didn't know how to pray. In fact, the disciples were so broken and confused about Jesus' death, upcoming death, that they couldn't understand it, and they argued among themselves as to who was going to be the leader and they completely forgot about the formality of feet washing. We can talk about feet washing and the importance and respect that it showed when we picture Jerusalem and the Holy Land. Back in those days, people would walk in bare feet. Many of them had nothing to put on their feet. Some had sandals, some had cloth wrapped around their feet, but it was customary when they entered a house to wash all the mud off and all the road dirt. So when they came into a home, there was always a place with a pitcher and a bowl to wash the guests' feet. But the disciples were so busy with confusion that they completely forgot about the ritual feet washing. And it was at that time that Jesus kneeled down before his disciples and began to wash their feet. You see a picture of humility and love and respect. This would be the last time that all eleven would be together. The minute that Jesus rose from the grave, the new covenant was fulfilled. But until that happened, the world was still living under the old covenant of blood sacrifice. And during that time that Jesus surrendered his living body to the Father, it was about 12 o'clock noon on that Friday. There were three hours of darkness that fell over Jerusalem, and during those three hours, Jesus spent time in hell, paying the price for every sinner from the Old Covenant. He had to pay the price for the sin of every man who was not righteous for all of time. Jesus cried out, Father, why? Have you forsaken me as he surrendered his body? No one took his life. He gave it up freely. God could not bear to turn his back from his son. There was such a divine love that it just defies explanation. But it had to be done so that we could be saved and taken to heaven. Jesus taught them that the Lord's Prayer needed a template, and that template covered blessing to the Father and honor. It honors God in a way that fills our entire body, mind, and spirit. The Holy Spirit takes over and changes the desire of your heart, and you ask God to receive your unmatchable love. This is the kind of love that leads to the narrow road to heaven. And this weekend, traditionally known as Easter weekend, is also known as Passover. And it would be the last time that we would be held to a blood sacrifice as they did in the Old Testament. Jesus was going to shed his blood as the Lamb of God. And this period of time would go on to mark the beginning of the new age of grace in the New Testament. In God's divine schedule, Everything from the Old Testament to the New Testament has been fulfilled exactly to God's schedule. Now that Jesus has discussed this with his disciples and he has finished, he had to leave and travel by darkness of night to be by himself and to pray to the Father. He was remarkably brave, but also he asked the Father if there was any other way that this could be fulfilled. No one took his life. Jesus gave his life so that we could be forgiven and have eternal life. 
Jesus dismissed Judas because the devil entered into him, and he took a bribe equal to about a year's wages. He was selfish, and now there were eleven. So that Thursday night after the supper, Jesus goes to the garden in Gethsemane to be alone and pray before the guards from the king came to arrest him. That was Thursday night. Friday morning, he would have been flogged and forced to carry the cross up to the hill with a sign above his head that read, Jesus, Son of Man, as if it was a criminal mugshot. By noon, Jesus expired, lifting his hands as he surrendered his mortal life to the heavens. Three hours of darkness fell upon the city as he surrendered his spirit to the Almighty God. And during those three days, beginning on Friday at noon, he died. He was then put into the tomb with the stone, sealing the tomb, and guards were posted to make sure that nobody defiled anything or so that nobody could enter. And they were charged with falling asleep because when the third day came, the stone had been rolled away and Jesus was no longer in the tomb. And the guards could not explain to the king, I don't know what the punishment was, but they were accused of some wrongdoing. So now that it's Sunday, Easter Sunday, and Jesus rose and ascended to heaven, that new age of grace has been entered into. And his disciples were given certain spiritual and heavenly powers of healing and they were able to perform certain miracles that Jesus authorized, that the Father authorized Jesus. Okay. But before we conclude, I wanted to go back before all this happened. On the Sermon on the Mound, his disciples asked, how do we pray? They called him rabbi or teacher. And Jesus laid out a template. It's the Lord's Prayer. And I'm going to read that to you before I say goodbye. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever, and all who agreed, said, Amen. Thank you for joining me. For more Bible stories and reading and learning, go to grace to you or gty.org and tune in to Pastor John MacArthur at Grace to You Evangelical Church in Sunnyvale, California. Thank you and God bless you.